So what's this video? A look at the playback timer should show that I'm not going to be beating the Washington DC stage. What's going on is I'm trying to find a good strategy. I've succeeded a couple times. Right now you're watching me do a steamroller maneuver right into the stage's first objective. But as I like to call this a strategy guide, I don't really just want to abuse my huge manpower advantage and just walk all over the Union accepting 20,000 casualties just because I can. I want to do this in a way that can be both repeatable by anyone watching this, as well as useful for people who might not be as far ahead as I am. After all, I am only on the Brigadier General difficulty here. So while I am getting a decent playthrough together, I'll get the first step out of the way in this video, the Army Management Screen. A quick look at the results from the Hall's Ferry stage. I'll draw your attention to 5th Corps where I only got two promotions on my cannons despite my best attempts. However, so many of them are so close to a third star that if I slide around some of my more tenured officers, I can up that number. Specifically, I'll be able to get that number of three star promotions from two to eleven, as well as getting four of the fifth core cannons from one star to two. Anyone wondering where Cannon Commander Daniel Hill went, he's busy making the 3-3 Close Support Battery a 3-star unit. Other major changes include 5th Scout Snipers having been upgraded to the unscoped Withworths. They deserve them. 5th Corps Sniper Infantry all 3-starred, and I've upped them from Lorenz to CS Richmond Rifles. All Skirmish Cavalry have been upped to the Frank Wesson Guns. I've sold a ton of gear, including skirmishers, sharps 1855s, cavalry sharps, 12 pound howitzers, Napoleons, Lorenz, 1853 Enfields, and excess CH Richmonds. As we are in endgame, there is no reason to sit idle on two star troops, so all of the scrub infantry that hadn't been upgraded yet, I gave the assault course bonus and mid tier weapons like the other Enfields and the 1855 Springfields. And, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that there's a lot of Majors leading troops. And those troops are all one-star scrub units that a Major is in no way qualified to lead, but with them having been sized up to 2,500 men. I may have said earlier that I don't want to just walk all over the Union, but that doesn't mean I am unwilling to use my resources. I am, however, saving a fair amount of men and money. So, let's get a final look at my organization. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 5th Corps are all roughly homogenized. They all have a 3-star general leading them with the same 3 perk choices, and the corps themselves are all fairly standardized, what with the sniper infantry, mid-range infantry, cannon specialties, etc, etc. There are minor equipment differences, such as 5th Corps having no Tregegar cannons, also, 1st Corps' close supports are all 24-pound howitzers, but for 2nd, 3rd, and 5th, only the 1st close support battery has them, the others using Napoleons. But all in all, I've managed to get these 4 cores up to interchangeable efficiency. Not bad for only making a 5th core like 2 stages ago. And speaking of making a new core, 4th core. I no longer need them for holding reservist brigades or transferring between cores, so I've made them a core in their own right. They are being led by Trainer General Johnston, because although the officers involved won't get a chance to be promoted, due to this being endgame, the men themselves earn stats throughout the stage, and having them gain stats over this long stage slightly faster will be useful. And what does 4th Corps look like? Well, this. 15 infantry, all maximum size, and equipped with mid-range guns, and 8 artillery mixed between 10-pound Parrot and 10-pound Ordnance Cannons. Since none of these infantry are specialized, I've altered the naming convention a bit. They also are using what can be charitably called 3rd-tier officers, none of which are qualified to actually lead a 2,500-man brigade. And a quick look at the barracks shows that this isn't because I don't have better officers handy. I'm guessing all of you have figured out why I'm doing this with the officers across all my cores, but for someone who stumbled upon this series by accident, I'm expecting a lot of officer casualties, especially on my overinflated brigades. I want to be able to replace fallen guys with trained men, 
And the best time to, we'll say, lose officers is during the early phase pushes. Oh, and not so spoiler alert, this does mean that there will come a point in the stage that I get to return to camp to do that, which is why I also have a lot of men and money sitting around. So, that's it. Let me drop into the stage intro here. I'll save the reading of the stage until the video where I actually play it, but I just wanted to show this screen because when I add all five of my cores to the roster, it seems like I have a rather insane advantage this fight. I should have no problems at all, right? To be continued.